Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and we're down to the home stretch now. Today we're going to continue our look at The World Upside Down, a biblical earth documentary from 2020. Now today we're going to have a look at one of my favorite subjects, the horizon. This is something that I've done a lot of work with in the flat earth, so this should be a pretty easy one to get through. So let's cue up the music and get going. <laughs> The world tells us that the Earth is a sphere with a diameter of nearly 8,000 miles. If the Earth truly is a sphere this size, then that means that objects should drop lower and lower in our vision the farther they travel away from us, due to the curvature of the Earth. And as you can see from these images, that's exactly what happens. So really, what is your point? The formula to calculate the drop in height is 8 inches multiplied by the number of miles away the object is squared. So before you all jump into the comments, no, this is not the calculation to determine the curvature of the Earth. The Earth is a sphere. This is the formula for a parabola. However, it does get a pretty good estimation of the drop that you would see within, say, four or 500 miles, which is well beyond our horizon. But if you want to actually do a calculation as far as how much of an object should be hidden behind the horizon at a certain distance from a certain observation height, you need to use one of the Earth Curve calculators. Now, there's a couple of different ways that those calculators work but basically they're variations of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, another thing that you're going to have to include with that is the effects of refraction of the atmosphere. The Earth does indeed have an atmosphere, and as a result, light from distant objects actually curves upward and then downward towards our eyes, giving us the illusion the objects are higher on the horizon than they actually are. We'll see several examples of that in this video. This formula tells you how far distant objects should have dropped on a spherical Earth. For example, if something were 10 miles away, that means it should have dropped 800 inches, or approximately 67 feet. So let's go ahead and have a look at that number real quick. This is Walter Bisson's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator. Now what I've set this up for is a distance to the target of 10 miles, an observer height of essentially zero feet, which means that your eye is literally right down on the ground. And I've just got a target size in of 100 feet so that we can definitely see it. Now, the other thing that I did was I put in zero refraction. So how much of the object would be hidden? 65.7556 feet. So you see that eight inches per mile squared is not bad. However, it assumes a couple of things. First, it's a rough estimate. Second, it assumes that your eye level is zero. We don't look at things from directly on the ground. So let's change that a little bit. I'm six foot two inches tall, so we're gonna put in the six feet for my eye height and continue with zero refraction. Now it's 32.68 feet. So it makes quite a bit of difference What's your observation height is? Now, let's add one more thing. Let's put in standard refraction. So what do we end up here? 24.8755 feet. That's quite a difference from 67 feet. Wouldn't you agree? Now, here's the problem that I run into. Here's the calculation that he put up on the screen, and most people looking at this wouldn't go any further. They'll just say, oh, well, it should be 67 feet. Now again, that's zero refraction and your eyeball right on the ground. In a real observation where you're standing up and your eye is six feet high and you're dealing with standard refraction in the atmosphere, it's only about 24 feet is hidden. So is this a deliberate attempt to mislead people or is he just shockingly ignorant of how to calculate visible versus hidden heights on distant objects? because this particular calculation suits his narrative. I'll let you guys be the judge. Put a comment or two after this video and let me know what you think. The only problem with this formula is that things don't drop the farther and farther they go. They remain at the same height. 
For example, this is a picture of the Chicago skyline. This picture was taken from 52 miles away. According to the formula, the Chicago skyline should have dropped over 1,800 feet. Now, of course, I've been through this a number of times, and this is exactly what we would expect to see under these conditions from Warren Dunes, Michigan. But let's just go through it real quick. Here is our advanced earth curve calculator. The elevation of the Warren Dunes is 180 feet. Notice he didn't mention that. The target distance is actually 60 miles, and the target size is 1,450 feet. Now with zero refraction, how much of the Willis Tower should be visible? It's right there, 184 feet. That's with zero refraction on a normal day. Let's put in standard refraction. Over a third of the Willis Tower should be visible. Now, here's the problem that you run into. Based on the measurements of those buildings, about 800 feet is hidden. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna turn up the refraction just a little bit to about right there. And that reproduces what we actually see in the photograph. For a warm spring day over calm, cold Lake Michigan water. Now, this looming effect, which is a mirage, actually was so unique it made the local news. So the bottom line is to put this up and then use a zero elevation observation height at eight inches per mile squared is misleading. You do it properly, it's a perfectly normal finding. Now the main question is, where's the bottom 800 feet of those buildings? According to the formula, the Chicago skyline should have dropped over 1,800 feet. The tallest tower in Chicago is the Willis Tower, rising over 1,451 feet. Therefore, even the tallest tower in Chicago should be completely out of view from where this photo was taken. And by the way, in case you're curious, that's the Willis Tower right there. Notice how stretched it is vertically. And again, this photograph was taken from Warren Dunes State Park in Michigan at an elevation of 180 feet. These are some key things that they're leaving out of this story. And the question becomes is why are they leaving them out? Did they not properly research the photograph? Or are they attempting to deliberately mislead you? Recall, bearing false witness is a violation of one of the commandments. Proofs that the earth is flat exist all around us. Sailors who can see lighthouses from miles out at sea. Now tell me again why those lighthouses are built on hills and are very high above the hills. Is that so that perhaps they could be seen further? What difference would that make on a flat plane? Why wouldn't they just build these right on the shoreline? The light would just go right out over the water. No big deal. People would see that easily. The reason that they're built up like that is the Earth is not flat. The surface of the Earth is curved because it's a spherical planet. Airplane pilots who can see mountain ranges from several states away. You know, I was personally up in an airplane this last weekend. I was doing a communication relay at 8,500 feet. Two questions for you. One, why was I needed to go up that high to relay communications from our ground teams to our mission base? Does it have something to do with curvature of the earth and line of sight? And second of all, I took a picture out of the window of my airplane. And as you can see, the cloud deck clearly demonstrates curvature. Now clouds form at a set altitude above sea level. If you draw a line from horizon to horizon on the stratus clouds, those clouds will follow the curve of the earth underneath them. And as you can see from this line, there's a gap in the center. That's because the earth is curved and that is direct observation of the curvature from only 8,500 feet. Pilots who can see mountain ranges from several states away. Beachgoers who can see distant ships approaching. Now just two quick final notes on this. Beachgoers can indeed see ships approaching. First they see the superstructure, then they see the top of the hull, then they see the waterline. When boats sail away from us, they disappear bottom first. That's normal. 
And as far as seeing mountains from several states away, sure. The Rocky Mountains are 18,000 feet high. You can see those for hundreds of miles east over the Great Plains, especially when you're up at airline altitude. Now, just to give you a quick demonstration of that, if we have a 16,000 foot high mountain and we're flying along at 33,000 feet, our horizon will be over 230 miles away. Of course, we'll see the mountains. As a matter of fact, at 231 miles, we'll see the entire 16,000 foot mountain. Even at 350 miles, we'll still see over 7,000 feet of those mountains. Not a problem at all. 350 miles is several states. Being able to see the mountains from that distance is completely expected on a spherical Earth. This same concept, the ability to see distant objects, even exists within the Bible. In the book of Daniel, we are told about a tree in King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, a tree so tall you can see the ends of the earth from the top of it. Now, in case you guys missed that, let me make that very, very clear. This is a tree that existed in somebody's dream. It's not a real tree. It's a dream tree. And from the top of this tree, he dreamt that he could see certain things. Again, part of his dream. You know, I had a dream the other day. Susan Sarandon was my girlfriend. Does that mean Susan Sarandon is my girlfriend? Don't tell my wife. Daniel 4 verse 11 says, The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. On a globe, this would be impossible because the curvature of the earth would hide the ends of the earth. And of course, that's exactly what happens on earth. But here, I'll prove it to you. You go to any spot 350 miles from Chicago to the west or to the southwest. It's all prairie land out there, nice smooth land. Get up in the top of a building 200 feet off the ground. Take a picture of the Willis Tower in Chicago. You should be able to clearly see it. Now, the reason that you should be able to clearly see it is that it's 1,450 feet high. And the angular size of that building from 350 miles is well within the amount that you can detect with your eye. Just go take a picture of it. Heck, use a telescope and take a picture of it with a telescope. Not going to happen, Slick. Because the curvature of the Earth would hide the ends of the Earth. But on a flat Earth, such a view would be possible. I'm so glad that you agree. Now go take that picture of the Willis Tower and prove it. There you go. A similar instance is when Satan tempts Jesus in the wilderness. Matthew 4 verse 8 says, Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. On a globe, no matter how high the mountain was, it would be impossible to see all the kingdoms. But on a flat earth, it would be possible. Well, this is a rather long section to go through because the authors of the Turning the World Upside Down documentary are rather long-winded and ramble quite a bit. So today we addressed how far the horizon should be and whether or not you should be able to see something on our earth. Tomorrow we're going to have a look at how the flat earth is required for the second coming of Jesus. I think that you will enjoy it, so I'd recommend you hit the subscribe and the bell icon so that you know when it comes out. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, guys.